So the Bucks guys take a three-one oh lead my on the Bulls. Who Matt, have you no, need to write a transition book. Who have no answer for Giannis? <laughs> you know what Giannis had, Jay? What? Are you aware of how many points and rebounds Giannis had in this game? The best player in basketball. Is he the number one player in basketball? I mean, I think that's unquestionable. No, I, really, I wouldn't say he's undisputed. I would say he's got a claim to the crown. You to tell the me throne. who's more dominant than Giannis? Well, right I don't now. know about dominant, but him. Yeah, thirty-two MD, and seventeen, KD, man, that's easy. LeBron, thirty-two and seventeen. No, Chris Middleton. You didn't no see them Chris struggle. No, Chris Middleton. Did you? That's right. Um, Grayson Allen is the guy who could use some thick hands, I think. <laughs> People just want to take a swing at that, dude. For real, I do. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, let me sign. I'll co-sign it. There's some players out there, Key. You just he just kind of want to fight. He was booed throughout the game. Still gave him 27 points. By the way, here's what's interesting. Bull, the, the, the Bucks fans practiced booing him. Here, here's my thing if you're a Chicago Bull fan like myself. The dude who took Alex Caruso out yep. on a fast break, broke his wrist, mm -hmm. is a dude that gave you buckets in game three and game four. That gave you 22 in game three and gave you 27 in game four. Key, we talk about identity sometimes. And here's what frustrates me. I want a mean guy on this team. I look at this team and I see Vooch, I see DeMar, I see Zach. I'm not giving him a max. I'll, I'll, we'll get into that later. Like, I know Lonzo could have been that guy if he were there to a degree. But you want somebody who just commands a presence on this team and says, we ain't going to let that happen. Like, that that can't happen. We may lose, but that can't happen. That's, that's what not I'm saying. My watch. No, no. And, and, and before you even got there, I was going to say the same thing. Him, he's not going to score 22, 27. Nah. So I'm going to make sure it's personal now. Every move he make, I'm going to be right in his hip pocket. Every single move is personal, and I'm going to make it personal that way. Just because you did something back in January to my teammate, not only that, I don't like you. I don't like you. Yeah, I just my, don't like exactly, you. Exactly. I, I don't understand, like, why, why are players these days, it feels like they're so afraid to draw a line in the sand. Like, it's playoff basketball, man. We talk about Joel Embiid with the hurt thumb. Do you know what the Miami Heat are going to do to his thumb? Right. Every time Every he gets time. the ball, <laughs> slapping down on, hey, yo, this is the way the game is. You know what? Your team allowed us to have uh, reports that your thumb was hurt. It got out there. Okay. You playing? Part of the ball. Part of the ball. So, like, there are little things that you reckon. I don't understand why the Bulls wouldn't. So, let me, let me get, mm. okay, so let me get, let me get all this straight, okay, what we, what we think about this, okay? Number one, Grayson Allen, you can't let him beat you. You can't let no. that dude beat you. He knocked Caruso out in January and with the wrist and everything. You can't let that guy go off. His teammates are practicing, booing him in practice just so he gets used to it, right? And he should get used to it. And they let him do it. Okay, that's they number They probably one. wanted to boo him. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. It's like, hey, let's tell him that uh, we have to boo him to get him used to the boos. Just an excuse. But meantime, it worked, and he went off. Giannis. Went off. What can anyone do with Giannis, guys? Is there anything anyone can do with Giannis? Well, we everybody talk about the best player in basketball, and I know I said it. So we'll get a chance to see that at the next level. When the Celtics beat the Nets and the Milwaukee Bucks take care of the Bulls, we will see that colossal matchup. And we've talked about before, people have built walls to stop Giannis. We'll see the best defensive schemer, one of the best, Ime Udoka, head coach of the Celtics, scheme with Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Robert Williams, who is back, who will probably be the primary defender for Giannis and Al Horford, all take their shots collectively against See, the key, best player in the world. That, what Jay is saying, when, key, that's, this is go okay. ahead, uh, No, I was going to say, this is why when Jay says he's the best player in the world, he's number one, no doubt, I'm saying, yeah, I, maybe he's the best player in the world, but the title's still up for grabs. Like, it's not undisputed. It's not up for grabs. But yet. to me, key, he's got to beat what Jay just said, a great defensive team like the Celtics. Well, that's what, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was getting ready to get at, Max. I was about to say, not only him, this good Coach Bud now has to figure out mm -hmm. how to get other people like Drew Holiday and, and Brooke Lopez involved to a point where it's going to lift some of the offensive pressure off of Giannis because much like Jay said, kind of know what the Celtics might do with the same recipe, sort of, kind of, that they're doing with Kevin Durant. Is now you know that. You know going in, this is what they did to KD to eliminate him. Now they're going to try it with our guy, given the fact that Chris Middleton is sidelined, and now Drew Holiday has to, uh, a little bit, 
to relieve some of that pressure away from Giannis. But if Giannis, like you said, Max, gets through this, mm. like somehow kind of navigates his way around it, Mm-hmm. Mark yeah. this down, yeah. my peoples. You heard it here on KJM. We were the first show to talk about Steve Nash and some of the questions around his coaching and uh, co- combating strategies. Last year, before the Milwaukee Bucks won it, I was one of the few people to talking about Coach Bud and some of the schemes. Now, they, they got it done. There are a lot of questions around schemes. We're going to get a chance to see where Coach Bud is scheme-wise against what Boston's going to throw Budenholzer, out. Budenholzer, like, you th- you remember him with the Hawks, and they won, I think it was 60 games, and they got swept. It was swept four or five games in the first round, right? It's like, oh, wait a minute. But then, oh, it's because he doesn't have the horses. He's a great coach. Popovich tree, great coach. If you give him the horses, he can do it. Then he had the horses in the bu- with, with the Bucks, and in the playoffs, they kept coming up short. One thing I did notice about him last year was during the regular season – they didn't have as good a record. That's because he didn't have Giannis always initiating everything, right? Like, they were trying different things to get ready for the playoffs, and I think it worked, but you still have questions about them. You know, that was one time. The Nets were hurt. Well, their defensive strategies in the finals, man, were not good. I mean, they weren't good in how they were guarding Phoenix at all. Phoenix kept spacing them out. It was a very hot topic last year before they won a championship. A lot of people were questioning the schemes to Coach Bud. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.